This brings us to biochemistry, which is the chemistry of life. Our life on this planet is carbon-based. Organic molecules are mostly large and contain carbon. Inorganic molecules in our body are small and mostly do not contain carbon. Water is it. It is the most abundant substance in the body. It has a high heat capacity, which means it can absorb or release large amount of heat before it changes its temperature much. This is great because what it does, it prevents sudden heat changes in the body. Or if we sweat, we can carry a lot of heat to the outside of the body via water, via the sweat. You can see that sort of when we are closer to the coast where there is a large body of water, the temperature changes are not as drastic as if we go inland where there is not that much water around and it gets much colder versus warmer night and day. Another great quality of water is that it is polar. It is great in dissolving solutes. It's a great transport medium. It reacts chemically. So almost all chemical reactions depend on water. That will become very important because the removal of water or the adding on of water is one of the main things we have to do with in chemical reactions. And then lastly, uh, water has great cushioning effect and we can see that, for example, we have a liquid uh, layer around the brain that cushions it against um, hitting the head. Or we can also see that at the ends of bones in cartilage where water is trapped and makes a cushion. Salts are next. They are ionically bonded molecules and when dry, they're salt. When wet in liquid, they dissociate and become charged ions and those we call electrolytes. Here, look at the main ones we got in the body. We got sodium, we got chloride, magnesium, calcium, potassium. Those are some of the main ones. Ions are vital for nerve impulses. And they are, for example, part of the hemoglobin. So we need them. Electrolyte is charged water and conduct a light electrical current. If we dehydrate ourselves, we decrease the energy that the body can have. So, drink up on water. Acids and bases are kind of like salts. They dissociate ions when placed in the water. In this case, however, though, the ions are specifically hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. When they combine, they form water, H2O. So, they are an H plus and an OH minus. In a dissociated form, they are very powerful. Acids give over a hydrogen ion, so we also know them as proton donors, because the proton is basically a hydrogen ion. And bases are basically proton acceptors, because they can accept the one proton, or they give up a hydroxyl ion and one of the protons stays behind. So an acid then is a Hydrogen ion plus a large charged, negatively charged molecule, that's an anion. And a base is a hydroxyl ion and a cation. And the cation is a positively charged molecule. Changes in concentration of either the hydroxyl or hydrogen ions is devastating for the body. Example, if we're too acidic, oxygen cannot be carried by the hemoglobin. Well, that right there knocks us out. Measuring acids and bases, we look at pH, which is the concentration of hydrogen ions, but it's inversely proportional. So a pH of zero means a lot of those hydrogen ions, so that's very acidic. And a pH of 14 means not many at all, so we have much more of the other one, the hydroxyl ions. So that would be a strong base. When we look at these things, I mean, stomach acid is a pH of 2. So we have acids in our body that are very strong. Put that on the skin, it will burn a hole through your skin. Our blood is more or less a 7, a 7.4 to be exact. So that's pretty neutral. It has to stay that way. 
And how do we do that? Since fluctuation in pH can easily happen and are so problematic, our body has an ingenious chemical. They call them buffers. And buffers are weak acids or weak bases that can pick up excessive ions, the hydrogen and the hydroxyl ions. The most famous one is the carbonic acid, which goes into a bicarbonate ion and a proton. So they can switch back and forth between the carbonic acid and the bicarbonate and the proton, depending on what is necessary in the body. So the chemical equilibrium between those two resists changes in blood pH, because it can shift a little to the right or a little to the left, depending on what is necessary. Whew, that was a tough one, wasn't it?